like to advise you that I will be splitting, splitting my time with the member for Mississauga South. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased today to speak to the motion that's been introduced by the NDP in regard to the Employment Insurance Working While well Unclaimed Pilot Project. It would be nice to get some facts on the record instead of just fear-mongering. Well, Mr. Speaker, while the opposition parties continue to pursue their misguided economic policies, such as a 45-day work year or a $20 billion carbon tax on everything, our government remains firmly focused on jobs, growth and economic prosperity. That's why we're aiming to help Canadians be better off working than not with our changes to the Employment Insurance Program. Now, in Economic Action Plan 2012, we introduced a number of improvements to the EI system, which, I must remind folks, Mr. Speaker, is a temporary income support for Canadians who have lost their job through no fault of their own. The measures that we announced to ensure that the employment insurance system is better adapted to the needs of Canadians. It's more supple and it is fairer. These measures also ensure that the system helps Canadians to remain active in the labour force and also to more rapidly find jobs. Calculating EI rates will come into effect in April of next year to replace the old best 14 weeks pilot project as it was known. Building and learning from that pilot project, as we always try to do, the new approach will finally mean that regions with similar employment levels will be treated similarly. Mr. Speaker, that only makes sense. We're also stepping up our efforts to better connect Canadians with jobs that are available within their range of skills in their local area and to clarify their responsibilities while on EI. In addition, we announced a new Working While on Claim pilot project which came into effect on August 5th of this year. As I've said all along, Mr. Speaker, this pilot project aims to increase how much Canadians can work and earn while collecting EI. After all, we truly are facing significant skills and labour shortages in this country, in every part of the country, even in areas with high unemployment, and we need all of our talent at work. We need to encourage Canadians to work, not discourage them. And we know that the previous pilot did discourage people from accepting more work because of the low-level cap that was placed on how much they could earn and still protect their EI benefits. So we made efforts to change that. And Mr. Speaker, it's been proven in study after study that people can find a permanent job much more rapidly if they continue to be active in the labour market. And that part-time work, I should point out, often leads directly to full-time work for them. So that's our intention with the Working While well Claim Pilot, to promote workforce attachment by encouraging people to accept available work while they're on EI. That, Mr. Speaker, only makes sense. But I would remind my honourable colleagues that this pilot project provides the opportunity to test measures designed to encourage unemployed Canadians to work more while on claim. Let me explain. According to the former rules of the system, employment insurance beneficiaries who found part-time work or occasional work would see their benefits reduced by one dollar for every dollar earned once they reached the equivalent of 40 percent of their benefits or seventy-five dollars whichever uh, was higher so everything earned after that had to be uh, remitted and given or given to the government on the financial front it was not advantageous for them to accept any work beyond that threshold that after one day of work while on claim, working additional hours or days didn't pay at all. In fact, in many cases, 
the worker incurred expenses such as travel for working, putting in that extra work effort. No wonder then that workers were reluctant to take part-time work when this often led them to being no better off than they were before. Now the opposition loves to use examples regarding this project, so let me use one myself. Take Tracy, a salesperson who gets laid off and receives $264 in EI benefits per week, which represents 55% of her previous salary. Tracy finds three shifts of work that pay her $12 an hour, around minimum wage, for a total of $288 per week. Under the old rules, Tracy could earn the equivalent of 40% of her weekly EI benefits before having her pay clawed back dollar for dollar. This means that despite having found a job that could pay $288 a week, Tracy had no incentive to earn more than $106 a week or 40% of her weekly benefit. Why? Because her EI would be deducted dollar for dollar after that amount. So her combined income for, from temporary employment and EI would come to a total of $370. Under the new rules, Tracy gets to keep 50% of every dollar she earns. So using the same example, her combined weekly income would be $408. That's $38 more than under the previous regime. Mr. Speaker, if they have the choice, Canadians would rather work. And as I've said before, statistics show that those who can stay connected with the labour market stand a much better chance of finding full-time permanent work than those who don't. Now the opposition is against our efforts to help connect Canadians with jobs available in their regions. Mr. Speaker, we know that the best way to fight poverty is to ensure that people have jobs. And that's why we're proud of the 770,000 net new jobs that have been created since the end of the recession. Our overall strategy with this pilot, and indeed with all of the measures that we've announced in Budget 2012, is to strengthen the, I, the EI program as well as the economy. We will always work to ensure that our programs fulfill our goals. Now, the Working While well Unclaimed pilot makes it possible for Canadians to get more money working than they would if they were to collect EI alone. Nous continuons à travailler. We continue to work so that it remains advantageous for Canadians to be working rather than not. ...is allow the NDP to impose a job-killing carbon tax that will ensure that Canadians have to pay more for their heat, for their gas, and for their food. That will not make them and their families better off. This pilot, though, is a perfect example of how we're making things better better for recipients, better for the families, and better for the communities. This measure encourages Canadians to remain active, but eliminates factors uh, that are deterrents to looking for work. Speaker, our government will not be supporting this flawed and misleading motion. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Oshelaga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have something that was said by uh, the mask movement, the, uh, that they're saying that the new pilot project, uh, while it may be of interest to some, will be, and we admitted that it's for, to the advantage of some, it will be a disadvantage for low-wage earners compared to the former system, which allowed people to keep 40% of their benefits. According to this measure, the poorer you are, the more so you will remain poor. So how can the Conservatives not see that aspect of the bill that they've proposed? The Honourable Minister of Human Resources. Mr. Speaker, the problem with the old system was that when you could find work, and earn 40% of your benefits, your weekly benefits, or $75, whichever was greater. So for most people, that meant that they could work one day a week 
and after that they would work or rather lose every dollar that they earned because their EI benefits would be decreased dollar for dollar. So that was a disincentive for people to look for work. We want to encourage work. Hey, the Honourable Member for Keith Breton Cancel. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, uh, if I could uh, ask the Minister, uh, and uh, I've asked a true or false, and I've asked a multiple choice, I'm going to uh, go with an either or now. She can answer either or, and I'd be happy with, uh, with uh, if she answered uh, either or. Uh, first one would be uh, uh, the measurement. What measurement did she use? Because she's gone from uh, it's going to help all people to the vast majority to the majority. One of the guys over there said the other day that uh, you know it's going to help uh, uh, most. So, uh, but but there has to be in order to fix a problem there has to be some kind of measurement that's referred to. So to help me understand why this decision was made, if you could tell me what's the measurement that you used to determine who's going to benefit who's not. And then the, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I got another one. I'm giving her the choice. She used, she's used three examples in the House, all stemming from three days' work. Does she have an example uh, for if somebody only gets two days' work? I will have to stop the member there uh, to accommodate some more questions and comments. Uh, the Honourable Member, uh, sorry, the Honourable Minister of Human Resources. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I've said so many times to the Honourable Member, this country is short of workers. We have employers who are begging for skills and labour, even in areas of high unemployment. And the old system, the old pilot project, discouraged people from working more than one day a week. Mr. Speaker, that is not helpful. It's not helpful to those employers. It's not helpful to the communities to whom those employers are providing services. Mr. Speaker, our goal is to make sure that someone who works well on EI is always better off working than not. That's why we've changed the system. And Mr. Speaker, when the, old, when the Honourable Member refers to the old program, there are cases, yes, where somebody was better working on day one, but they were totally discouraged from working days two, three, or four. And we know that the employers would be better off if those people were working because they had the skills and we want to make sure that the workers and their families are better off working those extra few days as well because we know beyond the financial benefit that those people who are working part-time are much more likely to find full-time employment when they'll be even better off and so will their families. Uh, there's time for a short